uh, we are waiting uh, for Dr. Krishna Prasad to just complete the login. Meanwhile, uh, tomorrow there is a uh, session on day, day six. There is a session on interactive session on Indian heritage. It will be inaugurated by Patma Bhushan, Dr. Patma. And followed by a special address by G. Gaudama, the director of Pala Center for Learning, or popular as a. Thank you. Dr. Krishna Prasad, so have you joined us? So we'll start our first session, the interactive session on social responsibility. Uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad is here to join us. So we'll start our session with a special address by Dr. Narayanan V. Uh, Dr. Narayanan V is a pediatrician working as the chief medical officer of Swami Vekananda Medical Mission at Apadi. Dr. Narayanan took the lead in establishing an organization to work for the welfare of the tribal people of Atapadi in 2004. Swami Vivekananda Medical Mission was registered as a charitable trust in 15 November 2004. Uh, the mission, un mission under the leadership of Dr. Narayanan is now actively involved in running two skill development centers and a rural development program for tribal villages. He passed MBBS at Government Medical College and uh, DCH from Government Medical College, Tiruvannadurum. He is the Chief Medical Officer and Trustee Swami Vivekananda Medical Mission Atapadi, State Vice President Deshiya Seva Bharati Kerala, Director Vishwashanti Development Foundation Kuchi. He has been recognized with several awards for his service. We are very privileged to have you here, sir. Welcome to our session. Over to you, sir. Thank you for the introduction. I'm really honored to be on this panel uh, of Samarpanam, which is a week long webinar in memory of, in honor of our beloved Krishna Kumarji. It is uh, actually uh, a very great honor because Krishna Kumarji inspired us in uh, the, in our mission in Atapadi to do a lot. Uh, many innovative ideas he had given us in our activities. And uh, he was there whenever we wanted his uh, guidance and advice and support. So it is really a personal uh, pride in being part of this. Uh, oh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Your voice is not uh, clear, sir. Can you be a bit louder? Yeah, definitely. Okay, sir. thank you. So, I take a lot of personal pride in taking part in this webinar series. Uh, I thank the organizers for inviting me for this topic, uh, social responsibility. Am I audible? Yes, sir. I, yes, sir. Uh, is it better now? Yes, sir, better. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, I have a PowerPoint. Uh, I'll be I'll go through the PowerPoint.
Is the PowerPoint visible? Yes, sir, it is visible. Yeah, so I'll start. Uh, basically, the topic uh, for discussion today for the first one hour is social responsibility. Uh, since uh, my experience has been mostly or wholly with the tribal development, I would like to uh, present the topic in the uh, through the uh, theme of tribal development. So I have given the title as community-based interventions in tribal health and development based on experiences from a tribal block in Kerala. So uh, social responsibility is what makes us to uh, respond to the needs of the society to um, to act when there is a need when uh, there is a crisis or when there is something uh, that is something to be solved so we as responsible citizens we are supposed to reach out to the underprivileged the people who need help in education in health in uh, livelihoods uh, in basic needs of life uh, so we, we have a very popular name, uh, a popular term that is being used nowadays is corporate social responsibility. Uh, not only for the corporates, for every citizen, the social responsibility is a uh, is a compelling. Excuse need, me, sir. Uh, based in our yeah. Is it possible to be a bit more louder, sir? Not close. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, sir. yeah. So, uh, as a as a responsible citizen, uh, we are act, we are actually supposed to uh, uh, sir, intervene be better if you in whenever there is a need in the society. Is it not audible, uh, sir? Even now, it is very feeble. Uh, it is audible, but it is very feeble, uh, sir. If you can come closer to the mic or something, it will be better. Let me see. So, uh, whenever there is a need, the, source, uh, the, the citizens are respected to. By social responsibility. So, corporate social responsibility is a very common uh, term being discussed nowadays. The corporates are supposed to uh, spend a portion of their income, their profits on social needs. But uh, as per our Indian culture, Hindu dharma, it is our dharma to uh, look at the welfare of the society as a citizen, as, a, as an individual. So social responsibility is not uh, the prerogative of any one uh, entity of the society, it is a whole, uh, all, the, all the members of the society are supposed to act responsibly when, whenever the needs of the society are brought up. So, the needs have to be we have to put in solutions to fulfill the needs so that is what uh, we basically mean by social responsibility or what i understand by social responsibility of my experiences in community based tribal uh, development and uh, development in health in the tribal sector. Yes, sir, it is better. Just a minute. So, uh, Many of those who have been to the tribal uh, villages or uh, seen the tribal areas, I just would like to explain the tribal setting as it is, uh, the basic situation in the tribal areas. So we uh, we usually see the tribal families. Uh, just a minute, I'll just add a mic to my setting. Yes, sir. Okay.
Or is it audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah, thanks. So uh, the tribal setting, uh, I would like to describe the tribal setting in a little detail. For those who are not been in a tribal area or who are unfamiliar with the tribal lifestyle. So usually we see tribal families live in clusters. Um, the activities of living are all community based. So whatever they do, they do as a community. Whether it is farming or whether it is music or rituals or a community that is uh, the income generating activities, anything they do as a community, it is all group based. So we can see farmers uh, working together in plots as uh, uh, as group farming, whether it is in Vainad or uh, whether it is in Atapadi or any, any other area in uh, all over India. We see tribals uh, do their farming and other activities together. Uh, so this, whether it is a uh, funeral or a marriage or uh, whatever that happens in the community, in the tribal society, it happens. Uh, the, all the community participates in the whole thing. So even in music, usually we see uh, everybody singing together, dancing together. So uh, the, the, the group, group or the uh, togetherness is the basis of uh, all their activity. Interdependence is the core of their lifestyle. So. Uh, there, there cannot be a single individual living out of the uh, that is group. So whatever they do, they are interdependent. Uh, either in that activities of daily daily living or work or uh, other uh, activities, interdependence is the key. They have a very simplistic approach to life. Uh, that is, uh, as the day dawns, they think of the day, and then they go when they go to sleep, they don't think of they, they don't think of tomorrow. So the vision is short term, but uh, that is what uh, tribal mindset is all about. They don't think uh, long term. They don't think for five about five years after this or about ten years later. They are, they have a very short term vision. Uh, the essence is living in harmony with nature, and the religious beliefs are very strong. Um, whatever they do, they very they are very intense in uh, doing religious practices. Whether it is going to Shalimala or whether it is going to Murugan Temple or any any kind of uh, different, it varies depends on the region depends on the depends on the state or the region of the state. But whatever they do, they are very intense. They are very devoted to whatever they do uh, as far as religion goes. So uh, work and income and livelihoods uh, basically the tribals tribal people are very good farmers. Agriculture is a core of their uh, life. So, uh, many of them live with the collection of horse produce. Cattle rearing uh, is very common. Either it, uh, it may be sheep, it may be uh, cows, or it may be buffaloes, uh, but cattle rearing is very common. It, not only it is common, but it is a daily uh, engagement of most of the tribal families. Uh, very, very few people have taken up modern professions like uh, driving, electrical works, plumbing, and other small technical work, welding, etc. Uh, they have migrated as a group to towns to find jobs. But uh, they stay there for very short periods and come back as soon as the job is finished. They don't stay in the towns uh, for a long for a long periods. The industrial employment is very 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 less. Uh, yeah. Even when people find good jobs as a government uh, employee somewhere in the town, they find it very difficult to stay back there for long periods. This uh, trend has changed um, as generation by generation, but. In the older generations, we you would find very large number of people coming back, um, is running away from jobs, even very well-paid jobs in the central government, and uh, not going back again uh, in spite of many persuasions. So we see we had seen large number of uh, attritions in government jobs in the past, but in the coming the, in the, in the new generation, the situation has changed a little. Suicides and uh, 
anxiety, depression, uh, etc., we, uh, we have seen in large numbers in the uh, workplaces whenever they are displaced away from home. So these are things which we see across the country uh, in many places in varying grades. Education, uh, many of in Kerala, it is a very uh, highly literate state and the general trend is every, every child is enrolled in the school. Uh, in other states also, in, uh, enrollment in schools is improving. Uh, there are very few children who are not enrolled in schools. Mm, but uh, what we see is the education is not that inclusive in the sense that tribal children are uh, actually, they feel out of the mainstream because of the language in, in which they are taught. Mm, and uh, uh, the, the general discussion in the classrooms is not what they are used to. So they, they feel out of place in many schools. Uh, poor orientation to career choices. When they come up, they don't know what to what uh, stream to choose, what job uh, profile to choose, etc. There are high uh, student dropouts at different uh, dropout level, dropouts at different levels. Uh, the kind of grasping of kind of educational content is also very suspect. All the school, uh, children are passed till 10th standard, but how much they have learned is a big question that we have to answer. And there is poor focus on skills, sports, and cultural content. We know that tribal uh, boys and girls are very good in sports. They are very good in arts and uh, many types of uh, music and uh, instruments, etc. But uh, in schools, these uh, skills are not uh, encouraged. They are not uh, nurtured. So we find uh, that their skills are not brought up, brought into the forefront. And uh, they don't gain any skills other than the regular classroom teaching. So when they come out of the school, they, they, they may not know any jobs, uh, that is any, any, any income generating um, skills, uh, but uh, they will be uh, drop out, dropping out from schools without the, even their traditional skills. <clears throat> In uh, educated tribal youth, uh, they, have, they, have, they have completed graduation, post-graduation, they find it very difficult to get jobs uh, they, are, they are not over as i said the skills are low uh, they would have completed uh, courses they would have had the degrees but uh, the placement is very poor again they are unsure of what to do the silver lining is uh, though these circumstances are there we find a large number of uh, tribal children in uh, professional courses in agriculture in veterinary in, in medical seats in uh, engineering seats uh, in so many uh, dental uh, seats, so uh, many uh, at, in Atapadi, what we see is there are about 10, 15 students now undergoing medical seats. There are a few uh, agricultural graduates, um, four or five medical students pa passed out of MBBS are doing uh, post-graduation now. Uh, there are a few who have completed Ayurveda courses uh, in Ayurveda colleges. So these things are happening even though the situation is uh, bad, but a large number of students have come out of uh, very uh, difficult situations to uh, come out with flying colors. In health, uh, there are health is the main 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 problem of uh, tribal people. Something which causes a misery. Some uh, a lot of deaths happen at an early age. Uh, because of anemia, malnutrition, contagious diseases like TB, maternal and childhood diseases, like we see malnutrition, uh, we see uh, preterm delivery is leading to neonatal deaths. Uh, Atapadi was very uh, infamous for mal malnutrition and neonatal deaths uh, in the last decade. What we see, there are a lot of issues with mental illness, substance abuse, and alcoholism. Access to treatment late, uh, is many, many times an issue. Late arrival at a medical facility. Then uh, communication with the health person, whether it's a doctor or nurse or uh, health inspector or uh, medical uh, community nurse. Communication with them, <coughs> trust, uh, giving their trust to the uh, doctors is always an issue. We have seen many of the, many of the they, they, they don't listen to the doctors, they don't listen to the uh, nursing staff, etc. And the treatment modality and acceptability is also a big question. What kind of treatment they want, uh, whether it is uh, traditional treatment, whether it is, IVL, whether it is, um, if it is uh, modern medicine, what kind of treatment they are uh, comfortable with is always a big question. 
and uh, whatever medicine uh, that that are that is being given the compliance to the drug regimen is always uh, very very difficult to ensure uh, that is always there in any patient but uh, in the tribal patient uh, they may skip the dose any now and then so that is also a big issue social issues we as i said uh, the interdependence and the community network uh, was the biggest asset of a tribal community but in the with the rush uh, the, the rub with modernity has become um, the, the the community has become weak because there are weakened family and community bonds each person takes care of himself not the others so the poor, there is large uh, prevalence of alcoholism and drug abuse poor and intrinsic poor uh, community leadership is there religious conversions we see very often there are mavo um, that is promotion with the uh, ultra left politics uh, there is large land alienation and usurping whenever we go to tribal areas we see that the, the settler families have come and taken over many of the lands and uh, there is always a dispute going on then uh, women have been sexually exploited all over all over the country in tribal areas Uh, many of them have many youth have been led to criminal activities by vested interests they have been uh, that is manipulated exploited into doing the, the criminal work of other vested uh, people with that vested interests in the basic needs housing is improving in many states uh, uh, the whole country is uh, expecting to be uh, fully housed by 2022 uh, the scientific year of the coming and uh, that is a situation in many tribal areas also that central funds and the state funds are being used to improve the housing electricity is almost there in every village every almost in every every house we have electricity in deep interior uh, villages the, the solar and other forms of electrification are being done then uh, food security is ensured by government rations wherever uh, we we used to see large number of uh, stories of malnutrition and hunger deaths in the maybe 15 years back but uh, we we don't find those uh, nowadays because uh, the government uh, rations all over the country has ensured that tribals are at least fed one or two meals a day meals a day uh, so wherever they live uh, in the tribal areas we see large number of conflicts with animals wild animals Uh, the elephants the tiger and the other kinds of wild animals venturing into the tribal villages and harming their crops uh, harming individuals damaging the houses etc so that is one area of concern so we come to the development dilemmas uh, whenever we try to intervene when we try to uh, that is uh, go into the social responsibility area what do we do actually there whether Uh, we say yeah we are going to correct all the problems and take over um, the, the the things there and uh, so um, the experience has been very very um, confusing because uh, the the government agencies ngos private agencies the international agencies have all tried to intervene in tribal area and what we have seen is they have created a generation of tribes always looking for help ever dependent on money lenders politicians religious leaders exploited by criminal elements and vested interests so uh, whatever has to be done has to be done by us not by us that is the basic theme of the tribal community so far so the more the intervention the farther they go away from their self uh, we have seen lots of interventions the kind there was a famous intervention last year uh, two years back at the, at the community kitchen uh, in tribal villages in atapadi so uh, what did the community community kitchen do the whole the a group of people were interested to cook uh, lunch or the dinner for the whole community and uh, they used to serve it at some point of time and all the all the tribal families used to come and collect the food um, it is it was basically for the pregnant mothers children and the old old age uh, people but everyone used to uh, the families you didn't they start cooking at their homes and they started collecting from the community kitchens so whether it was uh, a sustainable solution to uh, the, the hunger was the major question and uh, all sorts of uh, corruption and misutilization was reported from the community kitchens 
So most of the projects projects started at come uh, targeted at tribal welfare have become redundant or faded away. So funds were there, uh, many equipment was installed or many facilities were installed like a lift irrigation, like a bringing water pipeline, or uh, like like that. So many things were being built or installed, but uh, later on we find that they were not used, they were misused. Or they were destroyed, or uh, the, the, the the beneficiaries never needed. So what is what is the problem that uh, we have to address? How do they how do we address and uh, which of these problems we will address? These are the developmental dilemmas that any person going into a tribal area with a very open mind with a social responsibility we face. So some of the approaches that we have tried, I'm just uh, putting it down here. Uh, for us to discuss, maybe think about it later. So, what we have tried is uh, um, through the years we have learned so many lessons, which I am trying to uh, present to you. The people's participation in problem identification and the development process is very, very, very important. Uh, we have to realize the potentials in education and make education inclusive. Creation of community-based institutions and developing leaders from the community themselves. Uh, we cannot be their leaders. They have to become leaders themselves. Promotion of agriculture, livelihoods, and industries, and increase access to health institutions and programs. Tar uh, and uh, specific health problems we have target and solve. So, what are the people's participation in problem identification? We discuss with the people what are what are the problems that they think that are important. We will we will see some problems, but they may not be very important to them. So they have to highlight the most important problems that they face, which are very crucial to their daily existence. Engaging the members when designing programs. Then when we are designing what are the solutions also, uh, the ideas of the communities, uh, the community are very important. The communities have to become the agents of their own development. The external agencies uh, can maximum be facilitators. They cannot be anything more in this process. So realizing the potentials in education, as Srinarana Guru said, education is the key for the uh, for the development of any society, uh, whether it is tribal or non-tribal. Uh, so uh, to provide inclusive education, emphasis on imparting cultural values because culture is what makes a society stick together uh, to to push forward and to uh, find excellence. So uh, even in our freedom struggle, we, we could find the cultural elements what, were what the, the nation uh, that is identified with, and then uh, was, that is uh, the, the whole movement was built on cultural elements. So uh, similarly here, uh, education has also uh, has also uh, is a, uh, education also needs very important cultural values uh, for it to be connected to the tribal children, then nurture talents in sports and arts, promote traditional tribal art forms, creation of village, village knowledge centers, develop vocational skills and uh, soft skills. Then, uh, as I said, creation of uh, institutions such as women's self-help groups, youth clubs, farmer groups, resource management committees, development committees, etc. Empower the members to run these institutions themselves. Develop community leaders and volunteers. Motivated youths and volunteers taking up various initiatives to address societal problems. Then they have to be um, really motivated to come beyond what they were doing as a traditional farming, traditional jobs, uh, traditional living income generation schemes. So commercial production, value addition, etc. Have, have to be done. Uh, access to health institutions programs target specific problems. So we have actually identified so many health problems which are intrinsic to the or specific to the area. So solving those gives a sense of uh, that is relief to the whole community like mental health, like alcoholism, uh, like sickle cell anemia. Like that in each area, tribal area, there will be specific health problems which are to be identified. It increases access through establishing quality healthcare facilities and providing affordable services. Many of the services may not be affordable, like scanning, like blood bank, like uh, uh, operations, surgeries, deliveries. 
So all these have to be made affordable and easily accessible to the general population, uh, tribal population. And uh, the, the communication gaps of you had to be addressed by involving the community itself, by educated youth, or the youth from the community have to be trained in, in health principles, how to um, maintain sanitation, how to keep hygiene, how to access health facilities in case of urgent need, etc. Have to be uh, all these have to be done by involving uh, volunteers who are educated and they have to be trained. They have to be um, trained to mobilize the community, etc. And specific problems have to be uh, addressed by research and studies. Uh, many of the tribal areas we find that no research has been done. No studies are, be, are there in, uh, in the existing health problems, etc. So these have to be addressed. So the impact of social responsibility is what I am as, as a conclusion. It has to be uh, in the tribal area, we have to create a future tribal society where it is a self reliant society with a healthy body and a sound mind, confident and positive of their future, with intrinsic strength and leadership, which will resist exploitation and subversion. Thank you. So uh, I hope. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it is very interesting to know about the lifestyle and uh, of the people in the tribal areas and also the scope for development in those areas. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and sharing your experiences with us. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll move on to our uh, next speaker, uh, we have a special address by Dr. Krishna Prasad P. He is the State Secretary, Ekal Vidyalaya. He obtained BMS in 1996 from Ayurveda College, Coimbatore. Mm -hmm. Served as a teacher in Ayurveda College, Coimbatore for 15 years and was the Deputy Medical Superintendent at the time of exit. Tried for cost minimization in Nidana and Chikitsa regularly teaches the topics of Agni and Ahara for foreign students at AVP's Academy at Coimbatore. Uh, we are very honored to have you here, sir. Welcome, sir. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prasad. Sir, uh, you're muted, sir. Please unmute. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You're audible. Uh, thank you. Uh, it is a great honor uh, to be a part of a program like this. And uh, Krishna Kumarji, uh, as we all know, uh, had a, a rare, uh, a great mind of making uh, small people uh, feel important and uh, encouraging them to take up uh, the, uh, tough assignments and uh, contribute to the society. As we all know that uh, people who need no an, uh, introduction usually get the longest introduction. But uh, Krishna Kumarji, as, as an individual, never liked. Uh, <coughs> never liked the uh, very long, uh, very long introductions. And, uh, Uh, he, he is a multifaceted personality and uh, he has contributed in uh, to the various aspects of the society. But now uh, I will uh, concentrate on uh, health and uh, Egel Vidyalaya. Uh, uh, not many uh, might be knowing about Egel Vidyalaya, but it uh, started as a small welfare as association for the tribals in the northeastern part of India because people there were having uh, very little income and they were being exploited by various people. And, uh, and uh, it, 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 uh, an, an important discussion between uh, Shyamji, Krishna Kumarji, and uh, uh, Prema Pandurangji uh, translated into you know, accentuated uh, thought and action in terms of Egal Vidyalaya, Arogya Foundation, and uh, friends of tribal society. And uh, Krishna Gopamaji was a patron in all the three. And uh, we all know that uh, Krishna Gopamaji uh, can initiate many 
on uh, activities and uh, revive many uh, activities like uh, uh, maybe like uh, temples that uh, have been closed for a very long time or projects uh, that were uh, uh, that had run out of steam uh, for a long time but uh, i was introduced to uh, egal vidyalaya uh, by krishna kumar ji and the late doctor uh, Sorry, I'm not able to recall his name. Uh, Dr. Sadish, who was my senior uh, in our college, and, uh, and uh, Krishna Maji was very enthusiastic about expanding the activities of uh, Egal Vidyalaya in Tamil Nadu, especially the activities of Arogya Foundation of India. And we all know that uh, the anemia eradication program that has been running for several decades. has not uh, uh, delivered uh, results to the extended uh, to the expected level and uh, we uh, tried a novel uh, effort where we decided not to give any medicine and uh, we we gave them a uh, preliminary idea regarding ayurvedic uh, mula siddhanta and we taught uh, our uh, acharyas and uh, Karya karta is about the basic principles of Ayurveda, Dina Charya, Rudu Charya, Agni Ag, Ahara, Ama Ajina, etc. And we have taught them about Hida Bhojanam, and uh, we encouraged them to rely more on their uh, the kitchen to remain healthy and to you know, use uh, whatever was available in their kitchen and whatever was available in their kitchen garden. Uh, to treat their uh, you know, minor ailments and they were always uh, informed and made aware that uh, whatever we were you know, teaching the boss uh, for the primary ailment and all major ailments uh, had to be uh, taken uh, to the attention of uh, should be brought to the attention of uh, qualified and uh, you know, medical practitioner and uh, initially we gave you know on a mandur vadagam uh, but that was only for a period of 30 or 60 days and uh, you know, we we actually literally speaking we used it as a bait and, uh, and maybe we also gave the trip love but after 30 or 60 days uh, we convinced them about the efficacy of ayurvedic approach to anemia and then they were uh, made to you know, cook well Uh, like uh, as uh, told in ashtanga sangraham madra mamlam and kadu and uh, we encourage them to consume madhur rasa dravyam in the uh, beginning amla rasa dravyam especially takram in the middle and uh, uh, spicy rasam in the uh, final part of the meal and uh, we all know that people in uh, tamil nadu were afraid of taking coconut oil and ghee and we had a, a training center in tudilu and uh, we we adopted the policy of uh, practicing what we preach and we uh, deliberately included coconut oil and ghee in the diet of the participants and uh, we made them uh, become aware of uh, the safety of coconut oil and uh, uh, ghee and they became ambassadors of ayurveda so in a, in a, in, a, in a country like ours where uh, the ever increasing population is uh, stretching the health budget uh, there is something uh, no, we have to do regarding um, anaushadha chikitsa and and krishna kumar ji was very instrumental in uh, uh, propagating this anaushadha chikitsa for uh, anemia uh, the anemia was only one aspect which we were uh, uh, and, uh, focusing on uh, but uh, and, uh, we used it as a pivotal point and we uh, uh, trained our volunteers to identify many other uh, diseases and uh, we gave them uh, the combinations of drugs containing three or five ingredients which they could uh, prepare easily for example if they had a congestion they were advised to eat papaya and pineapple with uh, lot of pepper powder 
or if they had a, a, a congestion during a November or December, uh, they were uh, uh, advised to consume spring onion or the stem of sepangarangu uh, or chamber. And uh, uh, we, we told them that if they have you know, blood stained stools, they can use the seeds of dadima. And if they had loose stools, you know, they can use the fruit rind and the septum. Uh, many were skeptical uh, uh, regarding how much uh, people who have just passed out of fifth or uh, tenth standard can uh, understand about Ayurveda. Uh, but uh, they, they broke all uh, expectations and they were uh, you know, asking questions like uh, students in the third BAMS. We were very surprised and when, when we taught them, we had to actually uh, you know, prepare ourselves for tough questions. For example, one uh, active member in the training program asked us, when we churn uh, the curd uh, marketed by the commercial dairies, uh, we don't get butter. Her question was, am I churning curd or buttermilk? Uh, then we, uh, we had to uh, help them understand that the butter has been removed and during the skimming process and probably they are coming, uh, probably they are skimming uh, buttermilk itself. So, no, no, we could not take uh, the tribal people who are working as acharyas or uh, karyakartas in Ekal Vidyalaya. And it was a highly uh, uh, and a satis satisfying job to, to, to teach uh, several such batches. And uh, Krishnagamaji, after a survey in Talavadi, uh, was very eager to start uh, a hospital for them at Talavadi so that it could uh, and, uh, benefit the people of three states because Talavadi is the place where Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Kerala meets. And um, oh, oh, no. uh, after Dr. Sadish became sick, and, uh, that project lost its steam and that was put in the back burner. So, you know, whatever you know, you know, uh, you know, work he initiated as part of Arogya Foundation of India uh, is being continued by Egel Vidyalaya. And now we are working, now we have uh, established ourselves in uh, more than one lakh villages in India. And we are actively working in uh, more than 75,000 villages. That is something which... Uh, Everybody who knows a, 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 a Krishna Gumayaji can be proud of. And, uh, and uh, at what point uh, he wanted to start a project in Navakarai uh, where the uh, AVP could uh, inject some uh, vitality into the vitality into the uh, health and uh, financial status of the people, uh, the downtrodden people uh, near Navakarai. We had plans to uh, distribute uh, and, uh, saplings of herbs and, uh, and uh, encourage the tribal people to cultivate it and uh, AVP uh, and, uh, buying back the produce. And, uh, Dr. Narayanan uh, enlightened us uh, how tribals are uh, exploited in every way possible. And uh, so, you know, That is so one. Uh, I will take this opportunity to request uh, AVP uh, to take uh, a lead in uh, injecting uh, some uh, financial activity into the otherwise uh, dull and drab uh, the lifestyle of the tribals. And, uh, and, uh, large companies like AVP, uh, big companies like AVP are buying huge quantities of gingerly oil. But if uh, they could uh, uh, decide to mill gingerly and uh, buy gingerly from the tribals, I think uh, you know, they would have, and many such people will have a sort of contract farming. And, uh, and uh, AVP will be permanently saving them from people who are exploiting them. 
once uh, you know, castor or, or ginger is being cultivated in the tribal areas uh, the top soil will be always kept loose and all the rain uh, water can be effectively you know, utilized for uh, rain water harvesting and ground water recharging and to improve the health of the soil and uh, i think uh, there is one activity uh, a eagle will be you know, expanding Uh, in the near future we had already an uh, an uh, initiated discussions uh, encouraging our uh, acharya and karigarta to cultivate castor and uh, gingeli and we had uh, promised to them to uh, help the market their produce if a company like avp you know uh, prepares to buy from ekal or from the tribals uh, directly uh it would be an it would be an an exemplary project for the entire country and uh, one one another aspect uh, which uh, a company like avp uh, can do on behalf of AV, on a Krishnakumarji is to engage in contract farming of herbs by the poor farmers, so that they can use make use of their own land, or they can make use of the the land in the educational campuses to cultivate herbs for ABP, and they they will be getting some income. and avp will also be getting uh, on, uh, drugs of on, uh, better quality uh so, whenever a person is invited to talk about krishna kumar ji uh, we have many things to speak about and uh, many memories and uh, surprisingly i am unable to uh, extend my speech right now there is nobody who regrets uh, not working more with uh, krishna kumar ji and uh, we all re- regret uh, his uh, unexpected uh, uh, demise and, uh, and i i think we all uh, might be feeling his absence I'm sorry, I'm not able to speak more about on this topic. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us and sharing your um, about the activities of Ekal Vidyalaya and how Krishna Kumar Ji was associated with Ekal Vidyalaya, and also your activities in um, um, bringing an Ayurvedic lifestyle in the people there. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. um by this we come to the end of the uh, part 1 of today's session uh, if anyone would like to ask some questions please unmute yourself and ask your questions or also you can put your questions in the chat box uh, and dr naren and i would like to add one point uh, which uh, krishna prasad ji raised that is uh, am i audible yes sir yes sir you are audible. Yeah, uh, this is about uh, AVP uh, uh, helping the tribals or uh, tribal people to cultivate herbs. So Prashomar ji had put forward this idea to us, and uh, we started uh, medicinal plants cultivation somewhere in 2015-16, uh, and uh, it was a we we started it as a pilot project. Then we took it up uh, with Nabad. Nabad is uh, supporting us for a. Um, project in which we involve 100 tribal farmers uh, to cultivate medicinal plants and uh, avp uh, avp subsidiary artha is uh, procuring the herbs from them it has been deemed to be very successful and we are extending it to 300 farmers now as a bigger project so prashomar uh, ji actually uh, asked us to do this in 2012 but uh, so 
Krishnamurti asked us in 2012, but we were able to take it up only in 2016. But now it has become a uh, rather successful project, and uh, it is being scaled up like anything. So uh, I should thank Krishnamurti for that, and uh, uh, it is going to, going to be a very very elaborate project. Now. Dr. Narayanji, this information is new for me. I am extremely happy that it is uh, going. Uh, it is. I am extremely happy that it is happening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody would like to ask any question? So we'll move on to the part two of today's session. Uh, it is an interactive session on Indian knowledge systems. Uh, first, we have an inaugural address by Sri A.V. Balasubramanian, uh, Director, Center for Indian Knowledge Systems, Chennai, uh, followed by uh, Acharya V. Vasudevan, Senior Advisor, the Ayurveda Pharmacy, Koyamutur Limited, and Yoga. Then we have Mr. Haridas M., renowned astrologer on medical astrology. <coughs> And Dr. T.S. Uh, Krishna Kumar, Professor and HOD, Department of Agatha Tantra, MBR Ayurveda College, Parshinikadava on Tantra. So we'll start this session uh, with an inaugural address by Sri A.V. Balasubramanian. Sri A.V. Balasubramanian obtained his MSc degree in chemistry from Bangalore University and did a postgraduate post MSc diploma in molecular biophysics from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Later, he studied physiology and biophysics at State University of New York at Stony Brook. Since 1982, he has been involved in work relating to various aspects of traditional Indian sciences <coughs> and technologies and trying to explore their current relevance and potential. In 1995, he founded the Center for Indian Knowledge Systems, uh, an institution devoted to exploring the contemporary relevance and applications of Indian knowledge systems, particularly in the area of sustainable agriculture. For his contributions in the area of indigenous traditions of sciences and technologies, he was the recipient of an honorary doctorate awarded by the Gandhigram Rural University, Gandhigram. Currently, he is the director of the Center for Indian Knowledge Systems and based in Chennai. We are really privileged to have you here, sir. Welcome to our session. Over to you, sir. Namaskaram. Thank you, Dr. Ramana, for that nice introduction. I deem it a great. Am I coming across clearly to everybody? May I ask the host, ma'am? Yes, sir. Thank you. you. It's a great privilege and honor for me to be a participant in this session to celebrate the subsidy of Sri Kitak Mahdi. As the scholar who did the introduction told you, in 1995, we founded the Center for Indian Knowledge System. Krishnik Marki was one of the founding trustees of the center, and he continued to play the nurturing and supporting role being as trustee. Till his very last day, he continued to that role to the end of his life. I had the great privilege and fortune of knowing him since the mid uh, 1980s. <clears throat> the most striking thing about Krishnik Marki is his great energy his great willpower, his great generosity, and the breadth of his vision. He was a great person. Find <coughs> someone who is interested in Ayurveda, he would support them all the way till the end to study Ayurveda. If they want to study Mirga Ayurveda, that's fine. If they want to study Viksha Ayurveda, that's fine. In fact, one of my hobbies is that I'm not an Ayurvedic physician myself or a scholar of Ayurveda. But as someone who is looking at traditional knowledge systems that was keenly interested in Viksha Ayurveda, that study of Ayurveda for plant sciences. This is something through which, in which through the decades or through the years, Krishna Mahdi provided strong support 
in the Kalpur Prakash need to be held every alternate year, where he has assembled groups of young people, brilliant and minds from all over India, to talk and interact and discuss about where he's contributing in the viral event. I was honored that he had called me to give a talk and interact with himself, his team, and young Vaidyas on Riksha Yoga. I'm not at all surprised to see this assembly of people who are speaking. Because one of Krishnamaji's names when he set up this institution, Sri Chakra Foundation, of which I played a small part in the early years, is that Indian knowledge systems are very broad. And all the 64 arts, Chatur Shakti Kala, as they say, the Shastra, must be encouraged, nurtured, and developed. So he was a person to whom I made was not just a question of administering some kashayams or doing some panchakarma. But he was interested in exploring all aspects of it, allied areas like yoga, medical astrology, tantra, every one of them. One of the great things through the years, he always nurtured, supported people who are interested in it. He was not insisting that they have to stay on with him, stick on his institution. Whenever people found that as a reasonable option, wanted to continue, they were really happy, he was very happy to support them. But many of them moved on to set up their own speciality as an institution. So it was very apt and very correct that a seminar and Indian knowledge systems will form part of the Sabdadi celebration. I have great honor to declare this session inaugurated and I look forward to interesting presentation and discussions in three different areas. One on yoga, the abstract of Asriban. One on medical astrology by H.T. Haridas and on Tantra by Dr. T.S. Krishnamurti. I am honored and privileged to be invited to this occasion and to be given an, an opportunity to interact and talk about it. Thank you very much, ma'am. I am very happy to inaugurate this session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for joining us in, and inaugurating our session today. Uh, next, uh, we have a session on yoga by Acharya V. Vasudevan. Uh, Acharya V. Vasudevan, a yogi and scholar in Indian knowledge systems. He has been a part of the Ayurveda Pharmacy Group, Coimbatore, since 1980. Presently, he is the senior advisor faculty of the Ayurvedic Trust. He had been assigned to various positions during his extended service with the AVP for the last 40 years. He had started his career as a yoga teacher at Coimbatore Ayurveda College. Later in 1995, he took charge of the director of Arshi Yoga Vidya Pidam Trust, an educational Gurukula Institute for Yoga and Allied Disciplines under AVP group and introduced educational programs for overseas students and a free Gurukula facility for Indians for the study of Shastras, particularly yoga and Ayurveda. For over the years, he had widely traveled in India and abroad, imparting knowledge of yoga and Ayurveda through educational programs and presentations at national and international levels. He initiated a university course for martial art Kalari Python in association with Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda University. Sanskrit, Tarka, Vedanta, Upanishads, Darshanas, Marma, Yoga, Ayurveda, and Kerala martial art Kalari Python are the special areas he is proficient in. He, he has authored a book on yoga titled Yoga Shataka Manjari. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Over to you, sir. Namaskar. Number pronounce. You are. My obedience to our beloved Krishan Bhargi, who left us a year back. Still, he has been with us. And that inspiration that he had given to all of us, that really motivating. And uh, I had a long association with him of 40 years, which is a big part of life. And we had 
organize many programs together. And I was always as an associate with him. And that was really the challenges and uh, as well as the idana of my career and uh, success. Without him, I would not have been what I am today. And still I am continuing this AVP group, the institution which is my family. It is all because of him. And we carry forward his mission and the great legacy of Ayurveda, yoga, and allied disciplines. His interest to us is not only the subject Ayurveda. He started something with Ayurveda. Then he had gone through many different subjects and started a Gurugula that's for the Indian knowledge systems. And I was part of that Gurukula. And his uh, intention was to bring it up to the international standards and to get the global acceptance and recognition, recognized to, uh, by the world. But unfortunately, he could not fulfill all his dreams. He had a dream to start a Guru Gula again for this 60 for Kalavijayas. But he, he uh, made a plan for that, a master program. But he could not make it into practical because by that time he left his mortal body. Anyway, with his remembrance and memories that we all work together for the cause of Ayurveda as well as the uh, Indian knowledge systems. Today, the symposium is on Indian knowledge systems. You know, this Indian knowledge system is the Vedic education. Though we call it Indian knowledge system, it is Vedic education. It comprises of the four Vedas and uh, again, the 18 Shastras. The 18 Shastras are called Vidyasthana. It's all related to the Vedas. The Veda, Vedanga, Upanga, and Upaveda. Like that, there are 18. And after that, the Darshanas are there. The philosophical or logical aspects of the truth. So like that, it said, it's, it's all like Indian knowledge system is like a big question. And India's contribution to this uh, world culture and global health is remarkable. Among all this great knowledge, great uh, philosophies and everything that we have contributed, the center of attraction of all this is yoga today. Because yoga is a shastra knowledge, what normally people call it science. But I use the word Shastra for it. Yoga is a Shastra. A Shastra of life. A Shastra of life and longevity. That's why a lot of people are getting attracted to this particular subject. And that's the center of attraction 
of Indian knowledge systems rather than anything else. See, yoga has been established long back in the uh, global health system. And uh, Ayurveda is also now coming up and finding a place in global health. So these two knowledge systems contributed a lot to the world health and culture. So a lot of people are now evincing interest in the study of Ayurveda, in the study of yoga. So when we consider, while coming to this yoga part, There are a lot of confusions because yoga has been very much commercialized today and people are totally confused about which yoga that they have to follow, which is the right one, which is the wrong one, because the fake practices are there. That is quite normal. You can expect that when something is getting popular, commercialized. Normally, we can expect fraud and practices. That's also happening in the field of yoga. But what's happening is that a lot of interpretations in the different ways and in different languages. The intensity of yoga is getting affected. People used to ask me if there are any books on yoga, any authentic text. Because that much even people do not know that there is a, it is a shastra or it is a darshana or it is a spiritual science. This kind of awareness that today not there, but this is the most popular. So, why people are coming to yoga? Because of uh, that is very, it's a, it's, a, it's a shastra which is very much practical. It's everything people looking at the, the practical side. Ayurveda is also like that. These two are the shastras that are dealing with the human life, health, and longevity. So both of them and are different, actually. That the standpoint of health, the, in Ayurveda, when you come to that health aspect, the standpoint is the physical part. When you come to the yoga, the health aspect of yoga is confined to the mind. That makes the difference actually. And uh, they are also interrelated because in a human system, that body mind, and mind are interrelated. One is depending on the other. That is what we have learned in the Ashtanga Hridaya, even the beginning, the opening shloka is Ragadi Rogan, in which it is very clear that Raga, the attachment, is the basic cause of misery. And that negativity is reflecting on a physical body by which the doshas, the physical doshas are getting vitiated, by which uh, an individual is getting sick. So in Ayurveda, the health is uh, more or less connected to the physical body. They deal with the physical body. In yoga, through the physical body, you are getting the discipline of the mind. So, in my 
my opinion, yoga is the continuation of Ayurveda, where the physical aspects are get, coming to an end, then the mental aspect starts and beginning to work. And so it is a continuation and it's a progressive method or progressive approach of health. So I think that an Ayurvedic physician should be or must be a yogi. A yogi should know the uh, importance of the physical aspects and how the, uh, the body mechanism is working. So the knowledge of Ayurveda is very essential. That must be the reason for there is a sloka that uh, Patanchiri is the author of uh, Yoga Sutra, as well as he had contributed to, to, to Ayurveda, that is Charga. Charga Samhita written by Charga is a contribution of Patanchiri and his incarnation. So in that way, they're always together. You cannot separate your mind from the body. You cannot separate the body from the mind. So they are always together. So these are two Shastras, but not two different Shastras. They are from the same root, but two different trends growing from the same root. So now the topic of this question is the uh, yoga, not Ayurveda. So we will come to that point. There are three aspects in the Yoga Shastra while discussing uh, discussing about human being. The primary aspect is the body. And next one is the mind than the soul. So that is the very fundamental of a human existence. A soul which possesses the body as well as the mind and their accessories. That is what a human being. So understanding and realizing and experiencing all these three different aspects as an individual and tuning himself with the nature and connecting to the divine is the content or the study of Yoga Shastra. Ultimately, what is required for life is nothing but this. Once you know or realize and start experiencing your physical body, the mind, and the soul, your life is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. What we call normally the Purusharta. So finally, there is an end, there is a destination, and there is a point in which you have to reach it. And that is Purusharta or Moksha, for which you have to start your journey basically from the body and that is a vehicle of the soul to fulfill its karma and reach the mocha. So that is a primary uh, uh, that instrument by which we start working. Even in our material life, when you look at the material life, you can find this, that any action, any karma that you are involved is with the physical body. So first thing is the discipline of physical body. But for a higher purpose, you cannot use this physical body for a higher purpose for which you have to refine it, purify it, and make it fit for your, uh, uh, your uh, aim, that is your goal. So a lot of discipline is required. A lot of refinement is required. This starts from the very physical body. Because the soul has a lot of karmas to fulfill, for which you need a vehicle, that is the body, as you are traveling to your destination, a car, 
you need a good car or you have to do the service of the car to get it in a good condition to reach your destination in the same way you start with this that is the importance of physical body and this part of yoga is called hatha yoga hatha means body hatha is a foot so it's a yoga with lot of physical effort you need to strive hard to achieve something with the physical body and that part hatha yoga this is something today that people define or understand about yoga hatha yoga is hatha yoga in hatha yoga primarily asanas and pranayam these are the two things that most people are practicing so uh, and uh, this part that is the hatha yoga part it comprises of various practice basically the surya namaskar practice which is a kind of exercise a series of 12 postures done in a particular sequence some people use mantras some people don't use mantras this facing to the sun and sometimes you can do it at not facing to the sun is varieties of forms of practice in it that is basically for the health aspect and energy aspect that you receive the energy of the sun god in yourself this happening through your sushumna nadi because in the surya kirana that uh, sahasra kirana surya is called sahasra kirana means thousands of uh, rashmi or rays or beams of light is emanated and that a individual is receiving in the body so there is one uh, ray of surya which is called sushumna this sushumna ray rashmi is entering into a human body through the sushumna nadi it has an opening on the top of the head through which you receive it and absorb it in the human body and that is the energy we are receiving from the sun which in ayurvedic terms you call as pitta without this energy this uh, body the way it cannot function so basically we start with this and there are a series of asanas practice in a particular sequence mainly 84 asanas are there according to the shastra there are 84 lakhs of asanas 84 lakhs means 84 Uh, lakhs of living species are in the universe for each species there is a asana like that but these asanas are not known nowadays you know only 84 asanas and their variations then there are, there are practice of asana pranayama mudra bantha all together this comprises of the hatha yoga that is body based and there are a lot of books on that and such books are called pragarana granthas pragarana granthas are dealing with the technical aspects the practical aspects of yoga every every shastra has got pragarana granth so uh, that yoga shastra has got the uh, hatha yoga pratipika kerenda samhita and uh, goraksha samhita shiva samhita like that pragarana granthas that deal they deal with uh, the technical aspects and you know there are different traditions different lineages of practice but today we don't have many and most of these traditions have been have been lost and today this pragarana this uh, hatha yoga uh, that uh, practice is mainly based on the natha tradition which was started from adinatha the god himself and uh, that tradition continued through the acharyas they had nine nathas in the parampara adinatha aishendra natha goraksha natha like that there are number of people number of uh, great acharyas in the parampara now in the hatha yoga we are following this tradition and when we come to the next that is the mental aspect 
The most important practice in it, again, here the pranayama comes, which is part of Hatha Yoga. Pranayama is central to Hatha Yoga. There are different types of pranayamas. Surya Bheda, Ujjayi, Siddhkari. But this is the most uh, powerful practice. At the same time, the most dangerous practice. Pranayama yinjana yuktena, sarvayoga chayokavit, ayuktabhyasa yoktena, sarvayoga sasampa. It is said in the Shastra. Uh, by doing a pranayama in the proper way, it alleviates all kinds of illness. But a wrong practice, an improper practice will uh, create many kinds of diseases. So one must be very careful in the practice of pranayama because I have experienced many people, I have seen many people. To say an example, there was a person who came to me with a tremor. When I asked about the reason for getting this, he said that his there is no actually no reason for it. And when I closely observed, I came to know that he has been practicing pranayama in a uh, particular parampara. Then I asked him to show me how he is doing it and uh, he showed me the way Then I realized it is the wrong practice. Then I initiated him in a different kind of pranayama. Number of pranayamas, not one. There is a series of practices. And after a few days, his tremor had totally gone. So I remembered this shloka then that Ayuktadabhyasa Yogena Sarvayogasya Sampur. Ayuktadabhyasa. This has been happening in this field, not in this field, in every field now. The reason is people lost the knowledge of Sanskrit. So you don't know what's right and what is wrong because unless you know that uh, authentic scriptures, how do you uh, trace out? Uh, the what the Acharya said was the, what the sages said. We know only the interpretations today in any field, even it is whether it is Ayurveda or Yoga or Vedanta, whatever it may be. Only the interpretations. And follow the tradition of the people who interpreted the different shastras. That is not enough. That's why so much of people like the fraudulent practice coming and our uh, ingenuity of shastra is questioned most of the time. So when we come to this Hatha Yoga part of Pranayama, it's a combined practice of mudras and dantas, without which Pranayama uh, not be complete. And the main thing of the uh, about the study of mind is based on the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. Yoga Sutra of Patanjali is all about the mind, the various aspects of the mind, its attributes and its faculties, its control. So all about, I think uh, they deal with psychology. I haven't seen such a book. So it helps a lot for me, for example, my career and practice of Ayurveda to study about the mind and better attend the mental diseases. So there is no text like that in, I think, in the Indian knowledge systems uh, with regard to the study of mind. Even no Upanishad, not any Vedanta. Yoga is really for that. And Patanjali is dealing with Raja Yoga, not so this Yoga Sutra is not a book for a common man. It is not for the neophyte in this field. It's a very advanced text. And you need a lot of uh, preparation and a lot of uh, commitment for the study of this. So that is all about the mind. In, you know, in, when you come to this Yoga Sutra, you realize the value of the darshan. Until then, there is no darshana in the Pragarana Grantha. 
once you reach the stage of uh, darshan or sorry padanjali yoga sutra you start realizing the importance of darshan it's a philosophy philosophy is not just for the philosophy philosophy is very practical my guru ji used to tell that any study if not uh, used in the practical sense the time is wasted the energy is wasted your study is wasted so there is a practical purpose for every shastra in philosophy or logic so darshana is ultimately that and uh, then we come to the spiritual aspect the higher aspect of yoga the spiritual aspect is also there in the yoga sutra of patanjali but still it is a different realm of experience spiritually it is totally a different experience and that's the higher stages of yoga there it is more connected to the principles or the tattva of vedanta all about the aspects of the soul the divinity enlightenment so so far it was all the preparations to reach the state of enlightenment the pragarna and darshan so the pragarna and darshan are connecting you to the spirituality the spiritual aspect and after the study of this yoga sutra the next one is the study of upnish which is called arsha arsha jnana arsha jnana means rishi prabha what is said by the rishis more kind of, it is more, more or less connected to the divine aspects so you know ultimately human being has the three aspects the physical mental and spiritual aspect so some people say that yoga is physical and some other people say that yoga is a darshana what is all about the mind and some people say that yoga is spirituality is connecting you to the divine we all these are like said the right so when you define what's yoga it depends who is defining it <laughs> so if uh, hatha yoga is defining you give a different explanation to it and raja yoga is explaining is a different is thing when if an avatuda is explaining about it that is spirituality so like you cannot give a uh, just one definition to a great science which covers everything that is an interesting point of it so mostly this uh, the, the what is happening in you when you do this the first thing that that is why bhagavad gita says that uh, that as a definition that krishna says to arjuna see yoga karma so kaushalam what is yoga he said that yoga is karma kushalata karma kushalata what is karma kushalata that is efficiency of your work it is not the efficiency of doing something with your physical body karma kushalata is the efficiency of the work that you are or to perform you become fit for the practice of dharma because krishna had given the advice dharma kshetra guru kshetra in the dharma kshetra so that is the another definition of it and you experience also once you come into the field of yoga you start experiencing the benefits so it acts as a rasayana that the rasayana procedure that you learn in ayurveda the rejuvenative process yoga is a rejuvenation it cleans your body that's why the yoga therapy that is very much popular today though it is not a medical science there is clinical yoga this clinical yoga the 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 truth behind the yoga, the yoga practice is that no in ayurveda we have this panchakarma therapy which is central to the uh, ayurvedic therapies and lots of the practices are in the margin in the panchakarma therapy is what's happening the body is getting clean that is 
internal cleansing process, elimination of the uh, doshas, you call it toxins today, that elimination of the toxins from the body and make your body fit, clean, channels, and your ashes, the organs, the tattoos, everything. So your mind start working properly, efficiently, your intellect, your sense organs, your body, and all activities. When you get clarity in life, clarity in thoughts, and you are the right person to be sad things, like that, your personality is getting changed. So it is said that yoga is, what is yoga? Yoga is a shastra, uh, an oldest system of uh, practice, which encompasses body, mind, and the soul to develop your inner personality. So the, there happens a transformation to the individual. That is from the physical to the divine. And that someone is doing with the physical body. The physical body is involved. In the yoga practice, there are two aspects with the physical body. One aspect is the health and the refinement that is happening to the physical body. In another aspect, it is the renunciation that is happening to the physical body. So these two aspects are well attended and practiced. So actually, when you ask the definition or ask what is yoga, yoga is inexplicable with words. It's a state of experience. It is something that you have to experience. It is not a philosophy. It is not learning of the Yoga Sutra. By learning Yoga Sutra, you are not going to understand anything because sutras never reveal the inner truth. Please to understand. Maybe any sutra. You know. The inner truth, the Shastra, the revelation of Shastra happening when the sutra has Vyakhyana, that is the commentaries. Vyakhyana, Vartika, Vritti, Bhashya. These are the things actually that uh, are transmitting the knowledge, not the sutras. There are 195 sutras in the Yoga Sutra. But by reading that, one may not be able to understand the real sense of yoga. So it is inexplicable. It brings a lot of refinement. And see, especially in children at a growing age, yoga is highly beneficial. You have to start actually at that age. And that was actually the, the uh, uh, dream or what our Krishna Maharaj actually wanted to, be, to uh, bring into our system. And he tried a lot for that. So it is good in a growing age that you are intell uh, that intellectual capacities and uh, physical health the mental aspects, all become very sharp and brilliant. So that as you grow up, your personality will be changed and you, can, you, you start transforming to a different level. And that is very essential. So you have to realize something in life. Otherwise, there is no point in life just uh, attached to the body, eating, sleeping, and uh, involving in various uh, that is material, that is uh, activities or worldly activities, because all these are momentary and for a short time that will not last for long. So for a common man, health and longevity is the primary purpose. So most people are first drawn to the yoga for fitness. That is for the, with the aim of physical well-being health, strength, flexibility, stamina. That is perfect. And uh, then some other people are going for uh, as a uh, uh, remedy for their ailments. Like uh, many such diseases can be treated. I have experience of treating many of the cases with yoga. Sometimes without medicine, that yoga helps a lot. Surya Namaskaram, for example. I got an experience. A lot of uh, Surya cystasis and vitiligo cases can be easily treated by doing Surya Namaskaram. There's a particular way of doing it. 
or we tell you, I, I, I have really experienced that, that doing a Pratyaksha Namaskara with certain mudras, combining the mudras with that, and Pratyaksha Namaskara is uh, that uh, practice is Surya Namaskar facing to the sun in the morning as well as in the evening. There's a particular way of doing it. So what happened is what, that uh, after a few days of practice, the skin texture has changed. That is, in the, in the beginning, it, was, it became very dark and gradually started uh, changing to, to the texture to the brown color. Then the normal uh, skin color. Like that, the patches, the white patches slowly disappear. Not in every case, but most of the cases, if it is done in the perfect method, the results are there. Because it is told in the Shastra, and it is told by the Rishis. So we cannot deny the words. And we have to try to experience it, not to look at whether it is true or not. Instead of that, they said, we do that, because it is after the Vishnu. So it's very efficient. Like that, these asanas are very, very efficient. But the thing is that you have to continue with the practice. This is not happening with many people. After a few days of practice, in the beginning, with a lot of enthusiasm, people come into this, enter into this. And after that, a few days of practice, they drop. It's happening because you don't get the, uh, uh, that uh, eligibility or the discipline required for the practice of yoga, yama and nema. Some kind of restraint that you need, that is called yama, and also some disciplines of acharyas that you have to. Because in Ayurveda also there is, you know, sadhurata, the some certain disciplines in the day-to-day -day life one has to follow. Like that in yoga, you have the sadhurata, which is called the nema. And there are certain things that you have to restrain in life, like ahimsa, satya, and these things you have to put in practice, part of dharma. So one who has or possessed with the qualities or eligibility, then come to the yoga and do the practice. Then yoga is not a practice for a few days. Yoga is a lifelong practice. That is the idea of it. It's not meant for a few days and drop after. Then it's better not to start with. Why do you start to stop it after some time? So, there are a lot of uh, uh, that the fraudulent practices also in it, which we have to understand. And I have seen that some people, after some time, the practice, their uh, uh, attitude and habits are also getting changed. It curtails the temptation towards alcohol, smoking. It's my personal experience that I try with many people. So the idea of yoga and yoga therapy is mainly a cleansing process. As we, like we uh, do have this cleansing process, panchakarma in the Ayurvedic uh, treatment. What's happening in the system? You don't know how to clean inside. You know how to clean outside. So we take the bath, we do all the ablutions in the morning. and uh, But we don't know what's happening within inside the body. So the inner experience, you start the inner experience with the practices of yoga and you know how to eliminate the toxins from the body and where the toxins are getting accumulated. There is a procedure of doing it. It's very similar to the Panchakarma, like the Vamana procedure, the Virajana procedure, the nasal procedure, and uh, mainly the Vasti, Virajya, Vamana, then Nasya. So all these practices are there in yoga also, like the uh, Kunjakriya, that is for Vamana drinking water in one day. And Shankha Prakshalana, drinking water and eliminating through the anus to clean the entire uh, that is from the mouth to the anus or the uh, elementary canal. 
then there is the uh, yeah the cleansing process and uh, what is happening with this that's the most interesting thing the when you want to clean your house you sweep it and make it clean and similarly as a house is getting clean every day the body is also getting clean every day right uh, with the practice of different yogas nasana and pranayama pranayama itself is a cleansing because it's like a like a uh, blow of air that removes the dust it has the effect of doing uh, nastya similarly there is a practice called udyana bandha which is very similar to the practice of vasti one who experienced the vasti treatment will clearly know the benefits of doing udyana bandha so like that there are many uh, other things you know so what we have to understand is that yoga is not just a physical exercise like gymnastics or uh, any other uh, barbell 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 exercise or a sport it's not for your muscles it's for your inner body so you start from the subtle aspect of your of your uh uh of your body subtle aspects of your existence by which you will be able to attend all others like the physical body and the uh, soul aspect the atma so it's a great science so whatever may be the purpose your get can be uh, made use of if it is just physical exercise physical fitness you can use yoga for that you sit for your mental uh, that's for controlling the mind you can do that if it is for a spiritual enlightenment you can do that the method of doing is different the practice is different so in that way it helps or if you just want to uh, alleviate the ailments you can do it in that way the same thing is used in different forms for different purposes so it depends upon what you want because yoga has everything so yeah so that's all about yoga i don't take much of your time because there are two other speakers on the platform so anyhow i am very happy that i am invited for this program so i am part of this organization and it was kashmar ji's mission and his mission on which all of us are working and joining together in this platform and uh, i pray that we will carry forward his uh, mission and legacy to the future generation and each individual as a commitment in that process and i pray and wish uh, this program to be a great success and my humble pranams once again to all of you loka samasta sukhino bhavantu om shanti namaste thank you so much sir for enlightening us about the various aspects of yoga the hatha yoga and raja yoga and its impact on our body and mind and also its interrelation thank you so much sir uh we'll move on to our next speaker next we have mr haridas em a renowned astrologer he is an electrical and electronics engineer after 31 years of long tenure in kerala state electricity board retired as executive engineer in 2001 he learned basics of jyotisha from his mother uh, he acquired ma jyotisham from potri shri ramulu telugu university hyderabad now enrolled as phd research scholar from for jyotisha in 
Yoga Sanskrita University in Hyderabad, participated in a number of Ashtamangala Prashna's astrology seminars and webinars in Kerala, Hyderabad, and Bengaluru. We are honored to have you here, sir. Welcome to our session. Over to you, sir. Long story. Here, my subject suggested for presentation is medical astrology and the two within a short spell of some 25 minutes. The allowed time frame is hardly sufficient to explain the features of medical astrology. I take it for granted that the spectators have a reasonable knowledge about astrology to follow this. And this, with this idea in mind, I shall try to explain the subject in a nutshell. First of all, before going to medical astrology, let me define what is astrology. Astrology can be defined as that branch of knowledge that deals with the influences of celestial bodies on terrestrial bodies and events. It is widely known as Vedic astrology. Medical astrology is an extension of Vedic astrology with emphasis on health and illness. Actually, it demands the knowledge of both astrology and medicine to have the benefit to human being. Unlike other branches of science, the various rules of astrology are accepted as they are, which are formulated by ancient seers with their knowledge and intuitive wisdom. These are accepted without verification or proof. Or in other words, the dicta are not to be proved on any experimental platform. Our astrologers who strictly follow the dicta of our ancient seers are reluctant to accept the modern trends and for the same reason, the modern trends like astrology, medical astrology progress very slowly in this part of the world. The knowledges are, were shared to generations through Shrutis and Shrutis. Medical astrology is a less developed subject. No real research on a large scale has been done in our country. I do not ignore the fact that isolated researches by isolated individuals at isolated places are going on. It is high time that we should collectively work in this field. If the claim of our rishis is true, then it will be a boon to the suffering millions. It will help us in the diagnosis, prognosis, treatment, and prevention aspects. Economically, it will be a great revolution. Medical astrology has an edge over medical science. It can help foretell the time when a future illness is likely to befall an individual with an accurate horoscopic chart. This is a significant matter as the individual can be forewarned about the illness and advised to take precautionary steps. The knowledge can be used to listen, lessen or alleviate the suffering. A physician has no means of telling beforehand whether or not an individual is likely to suffer a particular disease in future. At the best, he can indicate 
the likelihood of the occurrence of a familial or hereditary illness in the descendants of a particular patient however it cannot point out which particular descendants of a given patient will manifest and which won't nor can he precisely foretell the time the disease will manifest in such a situation an expert astrologer with the sound knowledge of medical astrology can guide and help the doctor and the patient with the timing of the occurrence precisely with the help of horoscope now what is horoscope a horoscope is the imprint of the planetary positions just at the time of birth of a person it shows everything about a person in his or her entire life the timing of various occurrences in life is evaluated by the sha system medical diagnosis involves a thorough understanding of the normal functioning of the body as well as the process of disease that requires years of study training and experience despite all this there are pitfalls and at times the correct diagnosis eludes the experienced physician as an astrologer an astrologer should consider above facts while studying a horoscopic chart the astrologer should have sufficient knowledge of human anatomy physiology and pathology if success is the aim <clears throat> the most important basic principle of medical astrology is that the lagna represents the body of the native lagna means the first house of the horoscopic chart the ascendant or the lagna is also known as tanu bhav tanu means body the house representing the body since any disease has to do with the body of the patient this first house assumes the greatest significance in medical astrology even otherwise the lagna is the most important house of the horoscope since this is the benchmark for all other houses and the planets assume their specific roles depending upon the lagna only <clears throat> now one should have the knowledge of the 12 zodiac signs that represents the parts of the body of the kala prasha as per the stanza given that is kalangani varangamanana muro krit prada vaso vrdo vastir venjana uru janu yugale jangeda dongri dvayam that means the first sign is aries aries represents the head taurus represents face Gemini represents neck, shoulder, and hands. Cancer represents chest, heart, and lungs. Leo, upper abdomen. Virgo, lower abdomen. Libra, groin, buttocks, semen, etc. Scorpio represents genital and urine. Sagittarius, thighs. Capricorn, knees. aquarius legs below the knees pisces feet now in the same way the 12 houses of the zodiac are considered in another way also instead of rashi or sign the first house second house like that we consider so the ascendant sign or lagna head and brain second house face and right eye third house neck and right ear fourth house heart lungs and chest fifth house upper abdomen and mind sixth house lower abdomen seventh house groin buttocks 
Eighth house, genital organ and urine. Ninth house, thighs and limbs. Tenth house, knees. Eleventh house, legs and left ear. Twelfth house, feet and eye. There are a lot to explain about medical astrology. But because of the time constraint, I would like to restrict my effort towards the role of Mars astrologically that excites cancer, the modern malady, which is more relevant in the present scenario. There are quite a number of explanations astrologically about the causes of cancer, an important lifestyle disease of today. In some books, Rahu, that is the nodal point, Rahu is explained as a planet that provokes cancer in human beings. Here, I put my observational inference after painstakingly verifying birth chart of cancer patients as Mars the provoker of cancer in human beings. But it requires further study as to when it will occur and the region of relation in a human body. The timing of occurrence may be evaluated by analyzing the Desha system as to the influential period of the planets involved, mostly by the Bhukti or sub-period. But one, th one thing is quite sure that probability is 100%. So <coughs> here, in connection with this, I codify the following planetary conditions that cause cancer as follows. Well. I have codified some laws we can uh, call like, like that. <clears throat> when Mars conjuncts with the Lord of Sixth House in a horoscope, it is an indication that the native will get cancer. In a horoscope, Sixth house and eighth house are, houses are generally known as houses of diseases. Sixth house generally represents a disease that can be cured, and eighth house represents chronic nature diseases. When Mars conjuncts with the Lord of Navamsha of sixth or eighth houses, the native will have cancer later in age usually after 70 years of age. When the association of Mars is with the Lord of Eighth House, the native will have cancer of chronic nature. An important point I should emphasize here is that Mars at the Lord of Sixth House or Eighth House does not provoke cancer, but only when it is associated with the Lord of the House of Discs, that is Sixth or Eighth House. It's very important. Now let us consider some of examples of cancer cases as I explained earlier. At this point, I can proudly say that I could foretell the occurrence of the disease and it came through in the first case. I will just uh, <coughs> give a screen. <coughs> Screen sharing. I think you are able to see the screen. Yes, sir. Just one second. Yes. <coughs> Yes, here, you just uh, see the horoscopic chart. Here is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the Legna. And uh, you can see in the seventh house, Kuja, that is Mars, conjoined with Shukra and Chandra. Shukra is the lord of sixth house, and Chandra is the lord of 
eighth house. <coughs> Here, in this case, I have predicted early that the person is uh, on, uh, very much prone to cancer. And after lapse of four months, the native was <coughs> forwarded about the probability of cancer and hence he was vigilant in his day-to-day -day activities while trying to have a help from a dentist for filling the cavity of tooth and for crowning the affected tooth, they encountered some abnormality in the X-ray of the teeth. Before doing root canal surgery, a routine checkup by an X-ray and biopsy thereafter revealed that the native is on the threshold of cancer in the mouth. Thank goodness, the timely radiation therapy saved the native from the threat of cancer. You can in the birth chart, you can see Mars conjoined with the Lord of Sixth House and Eighth House. I have just uh, uh, indicated with the circles. Here is uh, another case of cancer which ended in death of the native. Here also, the mutual aspect of Sixth House and Eighth House Lord resulted in cancer of chronic nature. The native is a renowned senior artist who was a hit maker of many movies of the 70s. <clears throat> you can see, this is uh, Legna is uh, Mithuna or Gemini. And uh, you can see, I have indicated with the uh, red arrows, Puja is the Lord of Sixth House, but it is in mutual aspect with Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Eighth House as well as Ninth House. So, the mutual aspect can be considered as a conjunction. <coughs> Retrograde Chani is the Lord of Eighth House as well as Ninth House, very much adversely positive in Twelfth House. Generally, Third, sixth, eighth, and twelfth houses are adverse houses. Sixth house represents disease that can be cured. Eighth house uh, disease of chronic nature. And twelfth house generally considers torments, hospitalization, etc. is considered by twelfth house. The mutual, <coughs> then my emphasis here is only the role of Kuja or Mars in provoking cancer when associated with the Lord of Sixth and or Eighth Houses. The mutual aspect of Buddha and Guru makes the native an exponent in the field of silver spring, like that one can see. You, just, you can see here Buddha, Shukra, and Surya are conjoined in the seventh house. If Buddha is uh, Lord of Fourth House and Lidna. Shukra when Buddha and Shukra are conjoined with uh, Surya and uh, it is aspected by Guru, all this indicates the artistic nature of the person. And uh, Guru being the Lord of Tenth House, he is a professional cine artist. And I shall just uh, go to the next uh, chart. <laughs> We can consider another case in which Kuja, when associated with the Lord of Navamsha of Sixth House, as I have explained earlier, when the conjunction is with the Lord of Navamsha of Sixth House, the native uh, have cancer in later in his age. Here the nat native was not escaped from the threat of cancer but appeared only at the age of 74 years. The region of lesion was prostate gland. In the chart, Puja is associated with the Lord of Navamsha of the sixth house. And as explained earlier, I just you can go. Yes. Here, the Legna is uh, Capricorn. Capricorn. You can see the red mark there, where Puja is associated with Shukra. 
and Ketu. But Shukra, you just see, you can see, uh, Shukra is the Lord of Navamsha of Buddha. You can see the uh, Navamsha of Buddha in the upper region. That means Shukra is the Lord of Navamsha of Buddha. So when Puja conjoins with the Lord of Navamsha of sixth house, the native have will have cancer later in age. The native had prostate cancer and it was removed surgically in Buddha Desha in the sub-period or bhukti of Chandra and Rahu sub-period, that is Padyanta, Chidra. All the efforts were made to remove even a single tissue affected in a six-hour long surgery. But the disease reappeared after one year and the native succumbed to death. Here you can see the conjunction of six and eight lots in Kuja's house. You can see <coughs> Surya and Buddha conjoined in fourth house. At the lot of sixth and the lot of ninth house and eighth house are all conjoined. When uh, Lord of Ninth House is uh, along with the uh, Lord of Eighth House. That is an indication of uh, the generally Ninth House generally represents the treatment. So it is uh, associated with the Surya that uh, becomes successful, but only for a few uh, brief period of. Because that Surya is actually the eighth house lord. It is like that. So you can see here also the uh, contact or a conjunction of Puja with the Puja the, is the provoker of cancer in all cases. Here another condition is there uh, that is Ketu. Kedu is generally considered as that of equivalent to Puja. That uh, generally provokes cancer. Because when Kedu is involved, Kedu is just like Puja. So the condition multiplies. Now, there are quite a good number of cancer cases like the examples given above. In all these Monster Puja is responsible for cancer. If you find such planetary position, make aware of the situation of the native or close relative such that the threat can be averted or kept at arm's length. It is to be emphasized here that the planetary position indicates only that the native is prone to cancer. When such a planetary situation is found in a horoscope, then it is most likely that the native may be at risk, which may appear at some time in life. If sufficient attention is bestowed, like resorting to early detection of the disease, one can think for sure that cancer is not a disease to be afraid of. Women after 40 years of age should take pap smear test and mammography invariably every year. This, this is mandatory in Western countries. This should be a must if Puja is present in the horoscope. Women are vulnerable to uterine cancer. When Chandra and Shukra are afflicted by Puja, this is because both of these planets are karaga or significator of uterus. As I explained earlier, medical astrology does not have a well-organized literature. It is true that some studies are done at some areas of our country, but it is much developed. But it is much developed in Western countries. Our scholars in astrology are under the notion that Indian Vedic astrology is a complete science rendered by our ancient seers, and there is no scope for further development. It is not like that. 
they believe that they have already reached their destination here the saying of charaga is vital charaga said you are sleeping on your oars while others are sailing away it is pertinent to consider that our vedic astrology was devised centuries ago according to the situation at that time but <clears throat> today it requires modification to suit the present environment i call for the youngsters to go ahead with their journey of research as the destination is far ahead now with this i conclude my presentation on medical astrology i thank one and all who who patiently watched this video and i take this opportunity to thank the management of samarpanam in having given me uh, having given me an opportunity to present this important subject before you i reasonably hope that this could make a little impression in the minds of young physicians who would take the subject seriously for granted thank you all thank you so much sir for your valuable speech and uh, 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 enlightening us about the various aspects of medical astrology and how to predict uh, the upcoming diseases and health and we are very privileged to uh, have you here sir thank you so much next we'll move on to our next speaker for the day uh, we have dr t s krishna kumar uh about the topic tantra so uh, haridas sir can you please stop your stop your screen sharing um i cannot hear i am having some hearing problem so <laughs> okay sir can you please stop the screen sharing sir sorry can you please stop your screen sharing sir screen sharing oh yeah okay okay right right okay thank you stop screen sharing <laughs> screen sharing over there ah over there uh screen sharing nanna illa close ya next we have dr t s krishna kumar here uh, to introduce about him dr t s krishna kumar graduated in ayurvedic medicine and surgery through gurukula system from the coimbatore ayurveda college in 1986 he then completed his post graduation in rasa shastra and bhashya kalpana from government ayurveda college tiruvananthapuram he was initiated in traditional rasa shastra by renowned guru in the lineage of chattambi swamigal He was also initiated into the Shri Vidya Sampradaya of Tantrasam of Bhaskararya lineage and is a practitioner since 1991. Being a successful Ayurvedic practitioner for more than three decades, he has presented about 35 papers at several national and international forums. He is presently working as the professor and HOD department of Agatha Tantra, MVR Ayurveda College, Parshinikadava, Kannur. He was the founder president of Ayurveda Vikasa Kendra, Trishur. a charitable organization for development of ayurveda clinical practice and research in 1990 envisioned on the concept of uh, concept to preach practice and propagate holistic ayurveda he started shantiniketan ayurveda nursing home at kolkata in 1990 in 2014 founded gurukulam chetas vadakara and in 2018 uh, february 21st started atri ayurveda at malappuram 
He was one of the conveners of the first World Ayurveda Congress organized by Swadeshi Science Movement at Cochin in 2002. He received several prestigious honors for his selfless works in promoting practice of holistic Ayurveda. We are honored to have you here, sir. Welcome to today's session. Thank you. So, first of all, I just remember Krishnamurti was always associating with our Ayurvedic programs. And dear, uh, my dear friends, today's uh, topic is uh, Tantra. And uh, the Tantrism, for many people, it is a ritualistic thing. For me, why I serve through or probe the, uh, this Tantrism? Because I, after my BAMS and after my post-graduation in Ayurveda, I could not understand or I could not get the real sense of Ayurveda, the real sense of Ayurveda. Uh, sense in the sense means what is Vata Pitta Kapha, what is uh, Tapta Dhadu, and uh, what is the real meaning of Vajas, and why the Para Vajas and the Para Vajas. Many things are not answered properly by. Ayurvedic Granthas, even the commentaries and the Tika and every other thing of Ayurvedic scholastic explanation. So I just went to a guru, a renowned guru of Tantrism, who is also the guru of our uh, great Krishna Maharaji. So that is the advantage I got. My Guruji, Dr. Vijayan, initiated uh, Krishna Maharaji uh, two or three years before my initiation. So that relation also we have with, uh, I have with Prasomarji. Uh, and that's why I am uh, searching for uh, Tantrism. Not because uh, I don't, I, I am not uh, going to have uh, some ritualistic uh, Tantric practice or going to temple and doing some puja. No, not for that. And many people, when I am explaining Tantrism, they are not understanding uh, the real sense of, instead they are understanding the sense of uh, ritualistic Tantrism. When I am talking the Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara, it is nothing but the Vata, Pitta, Kapha. They just, uh, many people, they are uh, understanding it as three diverse uh, universal folds and three diverse uh, uh, human or the macrocosmic uh, folds. But that is not the relation actually, you know. The Brahma is the creative force of the universe, like that the Kapha is the creative force of uh, human body. And the destructive force of the universe is uh, Shiva, and uh, the destructive force of uh, the universe is, uh, sorry, the human body is Vara. So this explanation, or I, I have to say that the Vishnu is the conservative force of the, or the, he is conserving or preserving the universal entities or faculties. So this is the relation between the uh, doshas and the, the uh, uh, Brahma, Vishnu and Mahishra. But uh, And if somebody is asking that whether we can treat with the Shiva or Vata, and can you treat, it, treat the Kapha with the Brahma, so that is possible. That is possible in Tantrism. That is possible in Tantrism. If you understand the real meaning, the esoteric meaning of Tantrism which is possible, not the ritualistic Tantrism, I mean. It is the, even the mysticism or the mythology can be a, for a, a, a well, uh, and Pravara Buddhi, for a Pravara Buddhi, the mysticism and the mythology can be a philosophy. For the Pravara Buddhi, a Utkrishta Buddhi, Shishya, Utkrishta Buddhi Shishya, the philosophy can be a, an applied science. And if he or she is a Pravarabhuti. So here in Tantrism, everything is written in sutras. Many things are in sutras. To understand the esoteric meaning, you have to go beyond the lines, beyond the slokas or beyond the sutras. Then only you will get that. So I got that from my guru. He gave some clues 
in how can you tread how can you get the real knowledge from real knowledge of ayurveda from tantra so i am not going to explain much about the tantra some get just a, a superficial explanation only i can do with this uh, 20 minutes of uh, class so any indian science any indian science is based on or the study of the indian science is based on the shravanam mananam and nididhyasana the shravanam is nothing but just hearing the the granthas or the shlokas or just repeating that then the mananam happens you just logically analyze what is written there why it is how it is and when it is and what is the relation between so that is the mananam so first is the shravanam then comes the mananam then finally the nididhyasana where after getting the logical reasoning after getting the logical knowledge then you attain the wisdom you practice it you practice that knowledge and you become that knowledge you one you be one with that knowledge then only you can have the wisdom otherwise it is not possible just be repeating the commentaries or repeating the quotation for the granth or the granth text you may not be getting the real truth of any science any indian science so you do the practice first you understand the just by hearing you understand that is the shravanam and then comes the mananam and then the nididhyasana you get that nididhyasana and then only you can be one with the one with the parabrahman or one with the truth so this is very important in mundaka upanishad there is a a sutra a shloka called this is the, the meaning of the uh, first i will recite the shloka then you will understand many may, may be knowing this shloka dwe vidye vedita vyo parachavare there are two types of knowledge which we have to understand which we have to understand two types of knowledge the one is para and then comes the apara vidya the para vidya and apara vidya and uh, after explaining this padavidya and apravidya explaining the then pins the term the terminology after putting for where this terminology is by the guru the shishya is asking to the guru to that guru that round guru that then what is padavidya o guru please explain what is padavidya and the guru is telling no first you don't go for the padavidya don't go for the padavidya first you understand what is apravidya that is a relative knowledge the paravidya is the ultimate knowledge so i am going to explain only the aparavidya and i can explain only that because the paravidya is to be imbibed by you is to be attained by by your wisdom it cannot be explained then he is telling this shloka the paravidya what is paravidya he is telling no i will first i will explain aparavidya the aparavidya that nothing but the four vedas and the vedanga shiksha niruktam kalpam vyagranam jyotisham these are all the vedanga and four vedas just imagine that is all the vedas and this vedanga are only aparavidya not paravidya not ultimate knowledge not ultimate knowledge so just imagine that this is given by our acharya in mundaka upanishad and this is very important in understanding any indian science so all the knowledge all the knowledge which we are getting by the or through the grantha or the literary or scholastic explanations are aparavidya are aparavidya alone and to get the paravidya first you understand the vedas all the four vedas with the help of the vedanga then you get the real knowledge you get the real explanation then you get the real mananam from that mananam you have to travel alone even the guru won't be there with you you have to travel alone you have to tread alone then only from that aparavidya one day you will attain the paravidya so for that the guru you have to have a right renowned guru you have to get the right initiation so that initiation you are getting or i can say to get that para knowledge that initiation you are getting by the guru and only by the guru 
and that is the tantric initiation in uh, uh, tantric initiation or the tantra so this is very important in uh, any knowledge of india to get the knowledge any indian scientist the guru is the guru hand is important because to get the real knowledge to get the nidhyasana of any science whether it is yoga ayurveda jyotisha or sangeeta shastra or indian mathematics or dance whatever it may be you have to get the initiation from the right guru from the right guru then you have to travel alone you have to tread alone you have to tread alone then only you will get one day you will get the patavidya so this is very important in any indian science so all the sciences just imagine that all the sciences which are explained are aparavidya and go beyond the linguistic or scholastic explanation then one day you will get that paravidya so that is the aim of that is the aim of tantrika so that is the aim of tantrika it is not ritualistic so in tantra first we start with the mandra sangeda then comes the chakra sangeda then comes the puja sangeda the mandra sangeda is the explanation or the theoretical explanation i can say the theoretical explanation of the whole universe the microcosmos and the macrocosmos both are explained in mandra sangeda everything is explained the the theoretical concept the philosophical explanation even the myths and mysticism and the mythology everything is explained in mandra sangeda in mandra sangeda then comes the chakra sangeda where the diagrammatic representation of the universe of you of the human body of the head of the saptathatu everything the diagrammatic representation of the universal factors universal faculties and the universal small fractions even are represented by the diagrammatic representation the mathematical rep- representation representation the geometrical representation and even the calculation of the whole universal mathematics things are explained in chakra sangeda so with the mandra sangedam and chakra sangedam with the mandra sangedam and chakra sangedam you are applying that science or that tantrism that is called as puja sangeda so that is called as puja sangeda so in tantra many people many uh, so called tantric people even may not be knowing what is puja sangeda they are thinking that many of uh, the tantric people they are thinking it is only puja sangeda because in the temple oriented uh spiritualism in temple oriented spiritualism the tantric ritual is applied that's all but before entering into the tantric ritualistic application you have to get the mandra sangeda very very elaborate uh, very extensive science it is even the mandra sangeda and then comes the chakra sangeda where the whole universe is expressed through the diagrammatic representation so with both of this one that means mandra sangeda and chakra sangeda you are applying that is called the puja sangeda in tantra so this is the gist of the, a, a small uh, explanation a, 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 a abridged i can say explanation of uh, tantra and uh, we head of uh, many types of tantra the shaktaya school of tantrism the shaiva school of tantrism then the vaishnava school of tantra so the creative we can say the creative or the motherly the motherly tantrism is the shaktayam the shakti specific the shakti specific then comes the destructive i can say the destructive or the tirodhanam or the moksha is given in that tantrism that tantra is called as shaiva tantra shaiva tantra and then comes the vaishnava tantra where the both the left and right or i can say the destructive and the creative the creative and the destructive or the motherly creative and the destructive eternal tantrism when united properly the vaishnava tantra or the conservative tantra we can say the conservative the first one is the creative the shai or the, the creative or the shaktaya tantra then the destructive or the shaiva tantra then the preservative or the conservative that is the vaishnava tantra there are there are many classifications many classifications are there this is the uh, the one very uh, uh, many of the tantric people or the spiritual people may be knowing of this uh, thing 
And then another classification of Tantra is Kaula Tantra and Samaya Tantra. Kaula Tantra and Samaya Tantra. Or we can say Samaya Tantra and Kaula Tantra. So this is another uh, classification given by uh, many authors. And uh, in that Kaula Tantra, in Kaula Tantra, many esoteric uh, things are tools. I can say tools are applied. The Kaula Tantra is again divided into Uttara Kaula and the Purva Kaula. Many, many classifications are there. And the Vama and Dekshina, there are also, there are another class, another subsect, I can say, subsect. And another Samayachara is also divided into many. So they, these are all the main, these are the two main things, that is the Samayachara and Kaula Chara. And another classification I already told, the Shaiva, Shakya and Vaishnava. And then our great Acharya, Shankaracharya was explaining 64 Tantra, 64. So he is explaining in Saudari Lahiri, 64 Tantra, this is, this is called Chadushrashtya Tantrehi. Chadushrashtya Tantrehi, Sagala Madhisanthaya Bhuvanam. The whole universe is with the 64 Tantra, he is explaining. And many uh, uh, explanations are given for that 64. And some authors are explaining, even my Guru Nathan used to tell, the 64 means, it is, what I have to say, Anandam. It is infinite Tantra there. Infinite Tantra Sattva. For each and everything, there are Tantra. Each and everything. Each and every word, each and every uh, plant, even a Tantra is given in Mantra Mahodadi. For each and every plant, there is a Mantra and there is a Tantric concept. And for each and every diagram, there is a diagrammatic explanation. And for each and every human body part, there is a tantric explanation or a diagrammatic representation. Hello. So, this is very important in tantrism. So, as I told, the tantra is very elaborate. And with a short period, I cannot explain every aspect of this one and, it, and one thing it is uh, very important in uh, Tantrism is first many people are uh, thinking that the spirituality is against the mundane world or it is against the Panjabhuta or Panjabhodik uh, or the worldly thing but Tantra is uh, not accepting that. Tantra is telling every time the Tantra is telling that from the Prithvi from the Prithvi, from the earth principle, you have to travel from that earth principle to the water principle, that is the up tattvam, up. And from the up tattvam, you have to travel to the agni tattvam, and from there to vayu tattvam, then the akasha tattvam, and slowly you are placing your shakti, your prana, from the mulatara, which represents the mulatara, represents the Prithvi tattvam, and from there you are going beyond to reach the Akasha Tattvam and from the Akasha Tattvam you are transforming or metamorphosing to attain the Sattvam or the mind. From the mind, the Prana appears again and going towards the Atma Tattvam and that Atma Tattva, that is Jivatma, is again being one with the Paramatma Tattvam, you are attaining Moksha. So this is the way the uh, Tantrism explaining about the, the, the ultimate aim of human being or the moksham, or the advaitam, it is told, and in, in, in Buddhism it is told, nirvanam, everything is one and same, but the terms are different also. So from the Mulatharam, from the Mulatharam, it should go to the Swadhisthanam, from, from that Swadhisthana, it should go to the Manipuragam, from Manipuraga Anahatam, then to Vishuddhi Chakram, from the Vishuddhi Chakram, the Jivatma, or the Prana, should peer through the Ajnajakram, from that it should reach the Brahmarantram or Dwadashantam. So that is the way the Ayurveda, sorry, the, the Tantrism explaining about the Moksham. So we are not negating, the Tantric people are not negating, not negating the Panjabhuta. We are not negating the mind or the Sattva or the Rajas and the Samas. And we are not negating the Prana. Everything is the the Vibhuti, everything is the Vibhuti of the Universal uh, Almighty. It is the Vibhuti of the Universal Almighty. Or we can say in um, Sankhya philosophy, 
from the avyakta the mahat ahankaram then from the ahankara tatvika rajasa and the tamasika ahankara then the panjatan matra then comes the panjabhuda and where it terminates at prithvi tattvam so the shiva is the brahm is seated at the level of brahmarandra and devi is seated at the level of muladhara so these two are these two principles or two dualities are called supreme dualities in tantrism supreme dualities these supreme dualities reside in muladharam and sahasrara patam and when the shiva reaches the muladhara the devi is so happy and when the muladhara shakti or the devi is reaching the sahasrara patam the devi and shiva is both are happy so this is the ultimate union or the ultimate yogam explained in tantra so this is very what is our all is not tricky there are many ways to attain this one and the many ways of this one many tools are used even the panchamagara is very important the panchamagara is used in tantrism but many tantric people even or the ritualistic tantric people they don't know what is the real meaning everybody is using the drivya a matter a material thing is used instead of using the intellectual panchamagara so this is the problem is when you just ask somebody what is tantra many people even the foreigners many foreign people for in people who are all uh, the students of tantra they will tell oh panchamagara is nothing but the sex so they don't know what is the real meaning inner meaning instead they are using the uh, the mundane or the worldly material to propitiate them so that is not the way that is not the real way so many misunderstanding are there it is a type of black magic the tantra is black magic mis interpretations are there actually the real way of tantrism is to attain moksham and shankaracharya told shiva shakti kama kshitrata devi shiragarana tadannu paramara hridaya so this is the sri vidya tantra this explanation is given in saundarya lekhani by shankaracharya shiva shakti kama kshitrata devi shiragarana tadannu paramara hridaya ami hrille kaapi tisri vidya avasane shu gadada bhajande varna varnate tava nama avayavadam so shiva shakti kama chidrevi means these are all the esoteric way of explaining a mantra it is explaining the mantra sangeetam and that is the sri vidya tantram he is explaining first he is explaining chatushrashtya tantra is sagala badhisandaya bhavanam then he is telling all the cream or the crux of all tantra is nothing but the sri vidya tantram in saundarya lehri he is explaining the mantra for that sri vidya tantram in another context Uh, shankaracharya is explaining in vivek chudamani about the same thing but in another terminology with another terminology he is explaining the annamaya gosham that annamaya gosham is slowly transformed or should transform into pranamaya gosham from that pranamaya gosha jivatma should go to the manomaya gosham from that manomaya gosham the prana should the jivatma should go pierce through that manomaya gosham to should reach the vijnanamaya gosham and from that vijnana mogasham again it should go beyond that vijnana mogasham to the ananda maya gosham so this is the explanation given by vivek in the in vivek chodamani grantha so there also in tantra sam it is told from that ananda maya gosham anandam it is told in parashurama kalpa sutram in a, 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 a tantric uh, uh, grantha authentic grantha parashurama kalpa sutram it is given that anandam brahmano roopam tacha dehe vyavasthitam so here in the deham in our human body the anandam is the bliss is already existing but you don't know because it is covered by panjabhuta mind and rajasthan tamas and every nonsense so when you are reveal it when you are discovering it the life will come out the prana will come the chaitanya will come out so that is the bliss so from this point from the uh, uh, the shankaracharya uh, annamaya gosham you can say the same thing because he is explaining the annamaya gosham then the pranamaya gosham the prana means prana avana udana vyana samana nagan kurban karakaran devadattan dhananjaya these are all the dasha prana from there you have to go to the manomaya gosham and from that manomaya gosham you have to pierce or go beyond to the vijnanamaya gosham then from the vijnana mayosham anandamaya gosham so that is the tudiyam that is called the tudiyam 
and even in tantrism not only the turiyam is explained even the turiya atitam is explained the turiya atitam is explained but it cannot be explained in this uh, context or in this uh, you, know, you just get a guru renowned guru or right guru then you ask him he will tell what is the turiya atitam so that has to be experienced so this is the tantra and the tantra is so elaborate as i told so we can within 30 minutes or even with one hour i cannot explain all the tantra things i just give some curiosity to create some curiosity i am giving some points and in one tantric book this is given this is very important and in this context this is very important that's why i am putting that i am just giving that shloka to you just reciting that shloka avijnade param tattvam avijnade param tattvam shastradishu eva nishphala avijnade param tattvam shastradishu eva nishphala so avijnade if you are not knowing the param tattvam if you are not knowing the param tattvam just by understanding the shastra it is futile it is futile it is of no use this is given by a tantric grantha under uh, uh, reference from parashurama kalpa sutra and uh, the next line is given vijnade api param tattvam the first line is avijnade param tattvam shastradishu eva nishpala then the next line is vijnade api param tattvam shastradishu eva nishpala and if you cannot get the param tattvam from the science from the scientific explanation that science is of no use it is futile exercise and if you know the param tattvam then what is the need of the science what is the need of the science not needed so the ultimate aim of science is to attain the param tattvam and if you cannot get the param tattvam from that science don't go for that one don't practice that don't even get the shravanam mananam and the nididhyasanam don't go for that one and if you go to the nididhyasanam of the param tattvam if you attain the param tattvam why should you worry about the science so this is the tantric explanation so i am just uh, uh, the time is uh, i think more than 25 minutes i took i feel and the better i am consummating or uh, finishing the uh, paper or any doubt you can say but this is not the time for uh, asking the doubt i pray for the i pray for the the great soul of uh, our krishna maharaj om sahana avadu सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मा विद्युषा वह नम शिवाय थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर वैल्यूएबल टॉक एंड एनलाइटनिंग अस ऑन द वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ तंत्रसम सो प्रिविलेज टू हैव यू हियर सर एंड नाउ वी आर टुवर्ड्स द एंड ऑफ द पार्ट 2 ऑफ टुडे सेशन द इंटरएक्टिव सेशन ऑन इंडियन नॉलेज सिस्टम if anybody would like to ask any questions to our speaker please unmute yourself and ask the questions i think we don't have any questions uh, with this we'll come we end this today's session and uh, tomorrow we'll have an interactive session on indian heritage and uh, we'll have an inaugural address by dr padma subramanian indian classical dancer and choreographer and special address uh, by padma shri shri michel danino visiting professor humanities and social science iit gandhinagar and again a special address by mr g gautama director palar center for learning krishna mukti foundation india and on the 7th day on 23rd we'll have a documentary release the second part of the documentary uh, about krishna kumar ji named as on us redefining the black magic thank you so much for joining us uh, i thank all our participants and uh, especially our guests uh our speakers who have uh, taken their time out and joined us in spite of their busy schedule thank you so much uh join us tomorrow again at 3 pm uh for the sixth day of samarpanam 2021 thank you so much namaskar <laughs>